By 1970, San Francisco head coach Dick Nolan had built a dragon defense, a defense that came out breathing fire and burned anyone who got in its way. John Brody led 1970's Blitzkrieg offense, and on the last day of the season, the 49ers won their first divisional title. In 1971, the offense was better than ever, and again San Francisco became NFC Western Division champions on the last day of the season. Again, the 49er defense was a highly physical dreadnought that led them to a victory over the Washington Redskins for their second playoff win ever. So, with a budding tradition of success, the 49ers faced 1972, hoping to prove for the third straight year that in the NFC, San Francisco is the best in the West. The San Francisco 49ers opened their season at home against the San Diego Chargers. And the defense flashed off the mark with a great performance that included four interceptions, like this one by number 50, Ed Beard. But the real story was John Brody to Gene Washington, eight times for 140 yards and three touchdowns in an easy 34-3 victory. In Buffalo, O.J. Simpson opened up with both barrels and almost single-handedly won the game. John Brody was injured, and number 11, Steve Spurrier, took over and gave a preview of the agony and the glory that lay ahead for the 49ers. Despite Spurrier's late score to Ted Qualick, the Bills stunned San Francisco 27-20. In week three in New Orleans, San Francisco's total effort defense allowed the Saints only seven yards rushing in the entire game. Tommy Hart slashed in and cut Archie Manning down like ripe wheat. Number 72, Bill Belk, and number 74, Earl Edwards, helped in the sacking of the harvest. Laying in wait up top was all-pro Jimmy Johnson, who had one of four team interceptions. Safety Mike Simpson picked off another one and sauntered in for the score. Number 22, Vic Washington, followed the sweep lead blocking of number 66, Elmer Collette, in a Goldward thrust, and then got some on his own. Blocked by number 69, Woody Peoples broke Vic loose for a score. And then the offense streaked away unheaded. The 37-2 win set the stage for the first showdown with the arch-rival Los Angeles Rams. Playing away from home for the third straight week, the 49ers' puzzling lack of consistency was again evident. Plays dissolved in failure. Concentration slipped away. And although the 31-7 beating by the Rams was bad, the worst was yet to come. On a somber, rainy day, the 49ers came home for the first time in a month. 
Behind early against the Giants, they had to play catch up for most of the game. Two scores by Gene Washington kept them in it, but they needed another when in the last minute, John Brody was sacked and suffered an ankle injury. He wouldn't appear again until the last game of the season. With three losses in five games and John Brody gone, the somber California gray closed in and one could almost hear the band playing taps for the 49ers season. But out of the desolation came Steve Spurrier, John Brody's five-year backup. The big question was, could he turn this team around? The big answer came against the Saints as Spurrier hit Ted Qualick with the second longest pass play in 49er history, 81 yards. He then hit number 17, John Eisenbarger, for another first half score. But in the second half, Steve threw three unfortunate interceptions, which put the Saints on top. Only a Bruce Gossett field goal with three seconds to go allowed the 49ers to escape with a 20-20 tie. In week seven, the 49ers traveled to Atlanta where they put together their highest scoring game of the season. Vic Washington stunned the Falcons with a 98-yard kickoff return. This set the tone of a day which belonged to the special teams as much as to anybody. Rookie Ralph McGill, number 49, set an NFL record for most punts returned in a game with nine. Every aspect of the 49ers game was superb. Linebacker Skip Vanderbunt, number 52, intercepted one pass and ran it back for a score. Steve Spurrier hit Ted Qualick and number 85 Preston Riley for scores which broke the three game winless streak and gave the 49ers an impressive 49-14 triumph over Atlanta. In Green Bay as two non-playing quarterbacks got together, Steve Spurrier with his offensive line adjusting to him better all the time, continued to put the ball in the air, into the hands of his receivers and into the end zone. He threw for 315 yards, and Gene Washington caught his eighth and ninth touchdowns of the year. But the defense couldn't hold Green Bay's John Brockington, and the Packers ran to a 34-24 victory. With a 3-4-1 record, hopes of a title were fading. With their team now third in the division, the 49er fans had seen their great expectations turn into a draft from a bittersweet cup. With the Colts in town, number 53, Tommy Hart showed the courage that won him this year's Lynn Ashmont Award as he raced, slashed, crashed, and crawled on his hands and knees to sack the quarterback. While the pass rush was relentless, the deep backs and linebackers were tenacious as they hung all over the Colts. The offensive line, led by Forrest Blue and Lynn Rohde, opened huge holes for number 35, Larry Schreiber, who crashed through for 104 yards. Vic Washington continued to make the big play. Running back Ken Willard, number 40, gathered in one Spurrier pass, and Steve continued to throw for the deep six and Ted Qualley. 49ers 24, Colts 21. And whether the fans knew it or not, their big red wave was just beginning to crest. The 
49ers unveiled the Steve Spurrier Show in the Windy City, and it drew rave notices as Steve became the NFL Offensive Player of the Week by throwing five scoring passes. The 34-21 win put the 49ers back in the title race with one obstacle looming large in their path. For next, they were to meet the Dallas Cowboys in Dallas on Thanksgiving Day. With every game a must win, the 49ers found themselves on Doomsday's doorstep. And the 49er defense vowed that they would out thunder Doomsday. And so they waited, these men of crush and crunch, these hard rock grizzled men of the trenches, these men of the big red wave. They waited knowing that when the wild rumpus began, it was up to them to muffle Doomsday's drum. Cedric Hardman made good the vow, and so did Tommy Hart. Ed Beard and Dave Wilcox made good the vow. Dallas reeling, number 64, Dave Wilcox unleashed the 49er lightning and came crashing down on Craig Morton, who went one way while Skip Vanderbunt and the ball went all the way. While Charlie Kruger and the defense rested, Steve Spurrier was walled in behind Cass Vanizak and Randy Beisler, throwing the bullet, threading the needle unhindered. He hit on his 16th scoring pass of the season, and then fittingly the defense and Skip Vanderbunt capped the magnificent victory and finished off the Cowboys 31-10. As sweet as victory was, it could not be savored for long, because coming up was a showdown with the Rams before a Monday night TV audience. Although they were playing at home before a sellout crowd, the 49ers, the leading sacking defense in the NFL, couldn't get to Roman Gabriel, and the Rams won 26-16. With two games to go, the situation was critical. The 49ers had to beat Norm Van Brocklin's division-leading Falcons, so the 49ers, the NFC's leading passing team, reversed the procedure and turned to the ground game. Number 24, Jimmy Thomas, averaged nine yards a carry as he drove San Francisco goalward. Vic Washington barged to within easy scoring range. And twice, Ken Willard took it in. 
With Ed Beard and number 56, Bob Hoskins leading the way, the defense kept Atlanta off the scoreboard. In the 20 to nothing shutout, victory had been paid for by the hard rock men of the Big Red Way. And now with the Vikings in town, it all came down to one game, win or lose. It was the 49ers' third game in 12 days. And once again, it was the defense that held the opponent at bay. For Steve Spurrier, bad breaks led to three costly interceptions. And the Vikings capitalized to lead 17-6. Then it all came down to the last quarter of the last game of the season. And there was only one man the 49ers could go to. Vikings 17, 49ers 13, six minutes remaining. Time for the defense to make one supreme effort to stop the Vikings to get the ball back. Now the offense was rolling again. And it all came down to a third down with 35 seconds left. One play, one down that could make or break a season. And John Brody to Dick Witcher made it. 49ers 20, Vikings 17. For the third year in a row, the San Francisco 49ers were the NFC Western Division champions. The only team in the NFL to win its division each year since the inception of the playoff system. They would now meet the Dallas Cowboys in the playoffs. In the NFC playoff game against Dallas, the 49ers started with the best of all possible plays as Vic Washington blazed all the way with the opening kickoff. Vanderbunt continued his one-man vendetta with Craig Morton as he intercepted two passes and the rest of the defense hit and hit and forced five errors. John Brody turned the errors into points. Three times Larry Schreiber plunged in to give San Francisco fans a 28-13 fourth quarter lead and dreams of an NFC championship. The dream became a nightmare when Roger Staubach entered the game and miraculously led his team to 17 points. The clincher came with 52 seconds left to play. Defeat is the bitterest way to end any season, but the 49ers 8-5-1 record was a good one and they could look back at their accomplishments with pride. They could be proud of a defense that cast a baleful eye at their opponents and then came down hard on them with the likes of 14-year vet Charlie Kruger, number 70. Tommy Hart, the Lynn Ashmont Award winner, had 86 unassisted tackles for the year. 
Number 74, six foot seven inch Earl Edwards also bagged his share of ball carry. And the meanest man, number 86, Cedric Hardman, was a key to the front four that led the NFL in sacks with 46. Number 32, Mel Phillips, and number 23, Johnny Fuller, gave the 49ers crafty experience in the secondary. Number 44, Bruce Taylor, had another good season protecting his area from the deep six. But when it came down to sock and tear and stick, no one, but no one, was tougher than the San Francisco Big Red Wave. With Jimmy Johnson, Mike Simpson, Wendland Hall, and the linebackers leading the way, the 49ers' approach to ball carriers was less than subtle. The special team stood out as punter Jim McCann allowed only three and a half yards per return when his boomers allowed anything at all. Steve Spurrier came up with a super year as the cool young signal caller threw for 18 touchdowns and contributed much toward the 49ers conference leading passing total. Of course, when you've got number 82 to throw to, passing becomes a little easier. In 1972, Ted Qualick, who many consider the best tight end around, caught nine touchdown passes. Wide receiver Gene Washington has also become one of the best around. His 12 scoring catches led the NFL. Second-year running back Larry Schreiber developed into one of those runners who won't go down the first time he's hit. It was that the 49ers finished 1972 in the NFC as the best in the West for the third straight year. In 1973, they'll be going for four in a row. But there's more to shoot for than best in the West. And there's no reason why 1973 San Francisco 49er team can't be the best of the rest.